First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produce this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. All right, peace, peace. Back once again with First Order Radio. Your host, Dr. Aline Bay. And tonight, we're getting ready to have Tay Queen on. But before we bring on, begin ready to bring on my co-host, Brother Fahim Mel. You here, brother? Hey, how are you? What's up, East? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? How are you doing tonight? Well, well, brother, well, very well. How are you doing tonight? Oh, God. That's good, that's good. Yeah, I heard you did very well last week, God. All right, thank you very much, brother. Appreciate that much. <laughs> yeah, people enjoyed it. So um, let's get to the sister here. Is the queen you want? Peace, peace. What's good? Peace, oh, God. Peace, peace. Be good, be good, be good. And let's listen to some of this consciousness you can ready to drop on us. Some of these cosmic keys to the mythology here. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, well, first and foremost, my name is Tay Queen, for those who aren't familiar with me. Um, I'm a gemstone consultant, an herbalist in training. Um, I've dealt with holistic health and awareness from that perspective for some years now. I actually would say I was born into it from my mom. Um, and I also have my own uh, show on Blog Talk Radio at Etenzik Media, uh, and as well as I'm a holistic artist and an entrepreneur. So. Basically, um, what I'm talking about when I talk about um, unlocking the keys, uh, excuse me, unlocking the cosmic you keys to your mythology, I really want, I mean, I know it sounds all fancy, but I really wanted to give this information in a way to people where they could understand it from a practical perspective and gather what they do. I mean, I'm definitely still a student, definitely somebody who's still 
searching, so on the past, still receiving information. And, of course, I look up to people like you, Brother Panic, and other people who are in the community, given that constant growth and evolution of information. But the things I love about you guys is that you guys give practical solutions, and that's something that I really wanted to focus on in my own presentation. So, basically, the lecture that I will be giving is going to be on August 2nd, uh, on Saturday, um, in St. Louis. So that will be the full-on presentation. But what I want to do today is kind of give you guys like a precursor, uh, let you guys know what I'm going to be talking about, let you guys know what topics I'll be covering, and answer any questions to people who might not be able to make it all the way out to St. Louis and have some questions that maybe I could help clear up or you know, do work with them or whatever the case may be. So that's basically what I'm here to talk about. Okay. Well, let's get into some of that holistic health information. I know that was part of your lecture. So um, what you want to share with us concerning holistic health and, uh, like you said, the herbs as well as other things in which that they might need in order to, um, you know, in which that can benefit them. Okay, definitely. Well, first and foremost, with anything that's concerning holistic health, we have to uh, definitely address especially the eating habits and the patterns of people's diets or uh, living uh, patterns for eating or whatever you want to call it. Basically, how we eat is going to determine a lot of different things about how we're able to navigate in spirituality, even though... I'm not going to say it's secluded to one area of eating, even though because we have a lot of people in our community who are very driven about uh, or passionate about their lifestyle or their way of eating, which may be plant-based or vegetarian or otherwise. Um, and I think it's just important to emphasize clean eating first and foremost before anything because the basic thing is, if your system is clogged with all these toxins from the environment, from the food that you're eating, from eating processed foods, from eating foods with additives and sugars and all these different things, if you're eating that way, first and foremost, any of the herbal remedies that we give you or anything that you're trying to do on a holistic level is not really going to work immediately for you because you're going to have so much stuff in your system exactly. really blocking that. So exactly. it's important to understand. Hmm? I said exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's important to understand the whole concept of detoxification. So making sure that we're prepping our body, especially with the seasons, because I found personally for me that seasonal cleansing has really, really heightened my spiritual walk which is something that I really wasn't expecting because I definitely got into holistic health, not necessarily expecting spiritual results, but, of course, because your holistic self encompasses your light body, subtle energies, your orb field, and all those different things. Of course, these things are going to be impacted by the way that we eat. So, um, basically, I just wanted to share that aspect, of course. So, making sure we're, again, not eating anything that's processed, no white sugars, white flowers. Um, yeah, of course. Sorry, I'm getting a little feedback on this end. Of course, making sure we're eating clean, making sure we're eating lots of dark leafy green vegetables, as much live food as we can consume. Um, making sure that we're getting whole grains instead of the processed grain alternatives, so things like quinoa, wild rice, um, as opposed to the traditional white rice or even the brown rice, which is not so, it's not horrible, but it's not great on a, on a large level of consumption. Of course, making sure we're taking in foods that are high in antioxidant, um, like your dark berries, um, of course, again, like um, the dark grains, the black quinoa. Um, of course, thinking about um, anything that's going to be darker in color, blue potatoes, things like of that nature. Uh, of course, making sure that we're intaking those on a higher amount as well because those things are filled with antioxidants. They're going to feed our cells. They're going to regenerate our bodies from um, a cellular level and actually 
help us to become more connected within our own bodies, which is a is a very, very important key in holistic health and holistic healing. Um, we also have, of course, different herbs that you can intake um, that will actually help you along your spiritual journey and your spiritual path. Um, of course, every herb in and of itself has a spirit, and that is... Hmm? Hello? We here. I'm still, we here. Still here. Okay, sorry. I'm just getting. I hear a lot of background noise. It's just making sure that I'm still on air. Okay. Um, uh, so, of course, where was I? Yes, um, with the herb. Um, basically, any herb that you intake is going to have a high level of life connectivity because the plant kingdom has a symbiotic relationship with the animal kingdom. So basically, through the whole concept of respiration and all of that. So basically, any herbs that you intake, you're going to interact with the spiritual aspects of the herb by nature because herbs have spirit because they are plants and living beings. So you're going to interact with that by nature. But different herbs have different qualities. Um, most herbs have metaphysical properties, of course, which you guys are no stranger to. Um, but a couple of herbs that especially I like to use for my own spiritual awakening and spiritual wellness are mugwort. Um, I like to utilize cold foot, cold foot, excuse me, mullein. Um, cinnamon, rosemary, and I work a lot with those herbs because they're con- they're easy to get a hold of as well. Especially like rosemary, you can go to the grocery store and get that, <laughs> you right. know, and cinnamon and things of those nature. Um, I basically utilize them to um, spiritual baths with. Um, I'll use them. Um, when I'm doing spirit work or shaman work, I'll utilize them as spiritual smokes or smudges or things like that, um, as well as to increase the awareness and all of the different things. The mugwort has the ability to give off clairvoyance. It helps with dreams and manifestations and all of that type of stuff. The cult's foot really aids in visions, and I can attest to that because I've definitely dealt with cult's foot and immediately felt the uh, the um, visionary aspect of it start to kick in. Um, Mullen helps with protection, health, and love, especially with divination as well. And um, Mullen also is really just a great overall herb, especially maybe if you're somebody who smokes. <laughs> like I know that smoking mm-hmm. is not necessarily something you want to encourage, but mullein has the properties to actually lift off the plaque in your lungs. So if you're going to smoke a herb, mullein's probably one of the herbs you should put in there if you're going to smoke it. Um, cinnamon as well, um, just because it has that really high love vibration. I like to use that in my um, baths and things like that, even though um, in the powder form it can get a little bit messy, but you can definitely boil it in its stick form and then transfer it into the bath and do things with it like that and encourages attraction and love and higher frequencies and the heart chakra and all of that stuff. Um, And rosemary helps with, like, dreams and visions. And I even saw in an article uh, probably a, a little bit earlier this week that rosemary has been linked to helping people who have Alzheimer's and reducing their symptoms up to 80% just by utilizing it through aromatherapy. So it just attests to, like, the spiritual properties that it has with aligning with um, the whole concept of vision, clairvoyance, and dreams and all of that because it's going to have that physical effect as well where it stimulates the physical body as well. So those are a couple of herbs that I like to use. But basically the biggest thing that I like to emphasize with people is customization because the things that work for me may not work for you and the things that work for you may not work for me, be it that we're all individual beings, we have different um, lineages, different mixture, mixtures of DNA, um, be it that we have um, different backgrounds, different spiritual callings, different astrological energies, all these different things play a key point into what's going to work for you. So, of course, again, like the things that I share are things that I've done in my experience that work for me, but of course, things that may work for you may be a little bit different. So, 
Of course, I always encourage people to talk to people who have insight, especially on astrology, because that's one of the template things that I like to utilize to help me get a little deeper insight with my clients when I do my gemstone consulting as far as what types of energies that they have and what needs to be offset and kind of give me a template and a guide for where your particular energy is. So, of course, if if you really want to get deeper into this information, start to deal with your astrological energy, start to look into your own natal chart. I'm not an astrologist (laughs) by any stretch of the imagination, but I definitely have a bit of insight onto the energies, how they work, what um, the planetary alignments do in certain um, particular formations and what that's going to mean for you, especially when it comes to gemstones, because that's more my particular area of expertise at the moment. So, again, to, like, recap for, like, food and everything, like I said, make sure you're gravitating towards the dark leafy greens. Make sure you're gravitating to dark-colored foods because that means that it has high antioxidant properties. And, again, that's going to encourage cellular healing, which is something that's so key and so important in the actual um, awakening of your spiritual consciousness. Excellent, excellent. Um, so, of course, we understand the food benefits, the herbs benefit. Um, what else should um, they be practicing? You know, I know you spoke about shamanism, um, mm-hmm. you know, spiritual work, um, mm-hmm. anything else in which that can help them, you know, um, obtain a higher uh, conscious level. Um, what, what's your mm-hmm. thoughts on that? Well, basically, uh, that's a really great question. Um, And that's something that definitely needed to be discussed, especially amongst our community, because we tend to dive in on the deep end sometimes and, like, kind of lose people with that. And the place that I always say to start with all of that information is how to clean up your energy. Because before you want to deal with any level of shamanism, divination, um, any level of spirituality, it's important to understand how to clean your space because... You want to make sure that there's not any residual negative energies around from people who may have lived in your space before, people who come into your space. This is why it's really important that we monitor or moderate the um, type of energies that we keep around us, especially sometimes, though, people can't even help that because they're living arrangements or living situations. So the thing that I really like to emphasize, of course, again, like with them, is cleaning the spiritual space. Mm. Now, um, you could clean your spiritual space by smudging, which is a really popular technique, of course, with um, the sage, and you burn it. You can smudge other herbs as well, but sage is just really known for its abilities to transmute negative energies and the negative ions into positive ones, making it a more higher vibrational space that allows you to tap into higher frequency energies um, easier and it negates any lower frequencies from coming into that space or entering that space. So when you start to talk about spiritual terms, they might use the terms negative entities or bad spirits or um, demons or blah, blah, blah. But I like to talk in terms of energy just because it makes a little bit more concrete sense sometimes and you get less spooky about it. <laughs> But um, basically, you can utilize the sage to do that. Um, You can utilize, again, like I said, other herbs are really good that have powerful cleansing um, properties. You can do a quick search on Google, or you can look up at any, like, herbal book or um, practical spiritual book about different herbs that have protective qualities, like I mentioned, um, the rosemary um, and the um, cinnamon also have protective qualities. So you can burn those as well. Be careful with the cinnamon. It might get in your nose and you might sneeze. Um, <laughs> so uh, basically, of course, we we have the sage and smudging and all of that stuff. But you also can do frankincense and myrrh, which is another popular mixture because of the ability to have um, positive energy and bring in positive energy and attract positive situations. So burning things like frankincense and myrrh incense, especially when you get the resin incense because the resin incense is a little bit more potent rather than the sticks. Um, Making sure you clear out your space with not just the elements of fire or smoke or air, 
making sure that you're also utilizing other elements, bringing in the different elements. This is where you start to get into gemstones and you start to get into um, hydrotherapy and all these different things. Having things in your space like fountains or moving water um, actually helps to increase the flow of positive energy as well. So making sure you have, like, a small fountain there, inexpensive, they can cost, like, 20 bucks at your little local spiritual shop or botanica, or you can just find it sometimes even in, like, the home goods stores if they're having a good sale. So <laughs> you just go and make sure that you have, like, flowing water. Make sure that you're keeping out water um, for your ancestors to do libations particularly. That's good. Not necessarily... Um, Again, like, I don't come from any necessary uh, particular spiritual perspective, but you can utilize that in any way that you want to. Um, I also like to deal with, like, spiritual sprays or mists. So I will do, like, um, I'll actually create my own spiritual mix with um, a quartz crystal on the bottom of any, like, spray bottle or whatever. And I'll take the Florida water or some rose water and put it into the water maybe with a little bit of sea salt and just mist my room with that. You can also do sage um, sage mist. They sell that. I think I saw, um, I can't remember exactly who it was, but I'm sure if you Google it, there's a company that actually sells the sage mist because some people are a little bit more sensitive to the smokes and stuff like that. So the sage mist actually has the same qualities as a smudge. But I, I personally believe that the smudge is a bit stronger, and I like to deal with the smudge, but that's me. I'm an air sign, so, okay, <laughs> might be partial. But, um, yeah, so you can do things like small things like that, making sure you spray down your spiritual pla- spaces, a really, really particular spiritual place that you want to make sure it's very clean and very high energy is your bed or your bedroom area just because you're going to go to sleep which is where you do a lot of astral traveling and you're going to be in high spiritual contact whether you believe it or remember it or not that's a place where you're doing a lot of spiritual work so having things around your bedroom um that um increase positivity like certain gemstones making sure that you have um a dream catcher um, doing things like spraying your bed down after you, um, you know, when you make it in the morning and your bed, you know, your bed routine or whatever it is or whatever you make your bed throughout the day, um, just like spray a little spiritual mist in there, kind of like refresh the whole energy of that space because, you know, there's a lot of spiritual work that's going on. A lot of people, who, especially who are just coming in and waking up and coming into the spirituality, always talk about experiencing sleep paralysis or what's called the witch riding your back and stuff like that. A lot of those different practices can actually prevent those energies, which is just, it's just a lower vibrational being that's coming into your space and feeding off of your energy. It, I mean, there's a lot of different theories on what it actually is, but the whole point is it's an unpleasant experience, and if you don't want to experience it in that particular way, you can definitely use, um, utilize the things that I'm talking about to kind of guard your space against a lot of that stuff. Um, speaking of gemstones, when it comes to gemstones uh, that are protective, especially the ones that you want to place around your bedroom or especially if you have any electronics in your area, which, again, are not really good to place near you while you're sleeping because they can disrupt your frequency. But if you have them in your space and it's something that maybe you work in that area or you can't really help it, you live in a small space or whatever the case may be, utilizing gemstones like black tourmaline, red jasper, um, selenite, um, Clear quartz, of course, the smoky quartz even more specifically. If you can get it rutilated or terminated, that's really great as well. Um, any of your black zones like jet, onyx, they're going to help with grounding. 
and clearing negative energy simultaneously. So those types of gemstones is really good to keep around your space, especially if you have radiation around you or especially if you're looking to purify the energy and transmute it because that, that is exactly what those gemstones do. So, again, like I said, the red jasper, the black tourmaline, the smoky quartz, the rutilated quartz, and any black stones, any red or brown stones as well. Tiger's eye is another great one. Um, any of those type of gemstones actually help to um, purify that energy. So that's a great way to start. Now, um, if you're talking about getting into the practices, there's many different levels of um, divination or, or um, shamanism or different versions. I mean, you have people who come from the Vudan perspective. You have people who come from the Ifa perspective. You have people who come from various Native American backgrounds or perspectives. Or, um, or indigenous perspectives. Um, you just have a lot of different information on all of this stuff. And, of course, you want to study it to a point that it resonates with you and that you actually make a connection with whatever you're studying. You also have, of course, the Vedic with the Hindu aspects. You can go on for days talking about all <laughs> that stuff. But, actually, at the end of the day, what you want to do is make sure that it does two things. The spiritual system that you're dealing with does two things for you. It resonates deeply with your heart. Like when you practice it, you need to fill it in your heart chakra. Practicing spirituality for, uh, let's say, um, shallow reasons is not necessarily a good thing. Not that I'm discouraging anybody from practicing Spirituality, if that's your prerogative, go on ahead and do it. But for me, it definitely is an expansive experience, a more expansive experience when it comes from the heart. Um, you can deal with um, Eastern philosophies. They have things like uh, you can um, deal with I Ching readings. You have tarot card readings. You have um, rune readings. You have all different types of readings. And, I mean, I personally practice I Ching reading, um, and I find that it kind of resonates with the level of being able to mitigate um, between the aspect of the logical self and the spiritual self really nicely and kind of bring a deeper level of balance to that whole concept. Um, but any type of divination or spiritual system that you want to get into, the first thing that you really need to understand, again, like I said, is how to clear that spiritual space. And then once you go forward from there, start with the understanding of vibrating from the heart chakra and go forward into that um, spirituality um, or that spiritual system with the openness and not necessarily about becoming restricted by dogmatic aspects of it because that's another issue that a lot of people run into. They become cliquish within spirituality. And that's not necessarily something that's conducive to spiritual growth. Um, as you grow through your life, you're going to change. The only thing that's constant in this universe is change. So you're going to change, you're going to grow, your perspectives are going to become different, your practices may even evolve. So if you're going to be restrictive on yourself about what you do and what you don't do, whether it be from the dietary perspective, whether it be from the spiritual perspective, whether it be from any of those perspectives, you're basically cutting off your spiritual ties to your higher self because you're going to constantly grow, constantly change, constantly evolve. And that's really the point of all of this. So making sure that you're open-minded to understanding maybe what might seem to be conflicting spiritual information because at the end of the day if you're drawn to it and it resonates with you 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 are meant to receive that information so that's another um thing with all of that am I, how am i doing for time look all, I got to say, well. look all i got to say is god damn you drop it okay <laughs> <laughs> who, who? All the people that bring you to St. Louis because they are right on point. It's time to put you on the circuit. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> it is. It's time um, to put you on the lecture circuit. Who are these people? 
Uh, shout out to Brother Mentu Hotep, um, who reached out to me. Um, he's definitely the, the key reason why I'm doing the lecture. Honestly, if it were up to me, I'd be in a corner still reading books. <laughs> like, no. Gravitating no. towards no. information. <laughs> Look, 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 but, everybody's um, hearing how much information that you have. And, see, I'm getting ready to put you on the spot. Tell them how old you are. Uh, I'm 22 years old. I just turned exactly. 22. And so, so, right, so here it is. All right, here it is. They already see you. They already see you no longer having to just um, have to be in a corner with a book. All right? Um, you internalize it, and that's the point. The point is to internalize yeah. this information, and from the internalization is what sparks the light of the So from yourself into others, you know, so they, they put you on is a great thing. That's a great thing, all right? So mm-hmm. no longer think about no book and no corner, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I think the biggest thing that I, I feel like, I want to bring to the table with everything that I do, whether it be my show, whether it be my blog, whether it be the lectures and all of these different things. Is of course, A, I want to bring forth a level of divine feminine energy and forth with Isn't everything it? that I do. And right. then, of course, I want to be able to create this, um, give this information from a very practical perspective because I, and as much as I love all of my master teachers who have taught me so much in this life, oh, my God, I can't, you're one of them. So, <laughs> like, you know, I tell you that all the time. But, um, you know, as much as I respect all of the information that's out there, the thing is I just really want people to internalize this. I want people to live this because my thing exactly. is, like, spiritual coaching and health coaching. So my thing is about really getting to the individual person. And it was given to me um, actually in a dream by the ancestors that it was very, very, very important that each person understand that their energy is unique to them. They were born at a specific point in time, and their stars or their astrology affect, uh, reflects that energy of what the individual being is. You are made up of an amalgamation of different elements. You're made up of an amalgamation of different astrological energies, an amalgamation of different spiritual energies from the ancestral perspective, physical and spiritual. You're made up of so much energy. So why would you think that your spiritual path would be something that is so concrete, cut out, copy, paste? Like, it doesn't work that way. You're going to go down your spiritual path. Hmm? Right. Like you said, dogmatic. It wouldn't be dogmatic. Because exactly, you made exactly. Elements. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, Brother L, yes. um, um, Brother L, you there from um, St. Louis? Come on, right, ask her where she's going to be at for you can, you know, get right, your ticket. You can be there. Right, right. That's all I was going <laughs> to ask her. Where's, where's that going to be at, sister? Um, It's actually going to be at the Better Family Life Cultural Educational and Business Center. Oh, I know exactly um, where that's at. Okay. Yeah, I I, I was told (laughs) that everybody would know where it is. Um, The doors open at 4 p.m., and the tickets are $10 in advance, and they're $15 um, at the door. And, of course, um, the Brother Mentu Hotep who's bringing me to St. Louis will also be bringing Dr. Phil Valentine as well to St. Louis um, within a couple months. So anybody who buys tickets to my lecture automatically gets ten dollars off your purchase of any Phil Valentine ticket. So you know, a little extra incentive to come out haul at the girl. You know. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Uh, so if you want to get in touch about ticket information, maybe you have a business and you like to vend or do anything like that. Um, we also have brothers performing as well, doing their thing, so keeping the community tight knit and close together. If you have any um, questions about any of that stuff, definitely reach out to Brother Mentu Hotep. His number is 618-514-5240, and you can reach him at that number. You can ask him about um, getting your ticket. Give it one more time. Give it one more time. Okay, 618 618- Five one four five two four zero, 
And that's Brother Mensu Hotep. Five two one zero. You said. Yes, five two. Uh, four zero. Excuse four me. Four zero. All righty. Mhm. Cuatro. Oh yeah. yeah. We already see it. Go ahead now. Uh, I hope everybody heard that. And for those in the surrounding areas of St. Louis, um, Chicago, um, shoot, just in the area, period, um, go check out um, Tay Queen because um, as you hear her here on First Water Radio, she is dropping some serious information in which that oh, yeah. um, she's making it practical for you. She's telling you um, what jewels or Rocks or stones in which that you need, um, the herbs in which that correlates to those particular gemstones, as well as also the holistic health perspective. And she ain't say this, but she also um, is a student of yoga. So let's get mm. to that portion <laughs> yes. of the practicality mm. of the yoga, um, of the Kemetic or Egyptian yoga. So let's talk about that. Okay, definitely. Actually, it kind of popped in my brain to talk about that, but I was like, ah, whatever. <laughs> no, 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 it's funny that you bring that up. You know we get this in. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, basically, comedic yoga and dealing with yoga in general is something that I've always wanted to do with my life, particularly. I was just a naturally flexible person. Um, like all my life, even when I was, um, I was actually used to be a big girl. I used to be over 300 pounds. Even when I was big, I always was actually really flexible. So I love the concept of yoga and stretching the body and, um, actually being able to tap into deeper levels of consciousness through these movements. So as I began my studies, I was blessed to actually be able to get in contact with a brother named Yasir Rahotep, who does yoga skills. Big shout out to yoga skills and the whole movement over there. And they, he actually studied under the father of uh, Kemetic Yoga in the United States. So he was he studied under one of the people responsible for bringing back Kemetic Yoga to the United States, and especially in the Chicago area. So he gave me um, one of his DVDs. Um, Internal breath flow, I believe it's called. Um, and he gave me that DVD, and I just really just got into it, fell into it, and just really fell in love with a lot of the positions. The things that I love about comedic yoga, let's say versus your hatha yoga or like yoga that you'll find, like let's say at your basic gym or anything like that, is that a it's comedic, <laughs> so it's dealing with our people directly. And our information and our spirituality is geared towards a melanated body. Even the movements and the positions, as you see them, they'll be done by a melanated person, which you'll be pressed to find, especially if you try to look for, like, yoga DVDs or stuff like that. It's harder to find um, people of color. They're starting to emerge more and more every day. But um, it's harder to find people of color doing the movements and you see how a person of color's body is supposed to look because our, our spines are actually shaped differently. So when we do the positions, it's going to look a little bit different on us. Um, so I started to deal with that level of information, and one of the clearest things that stood out to me was I felt the energetic effects immediately. Like I literally felt my aura lighting up. When I would do certain certain positions, you feel a deeper connectivity to, like, raw energy or the solar energy. It definitely aids in opening up the solar plexus, which is one of the things that he doesn't directly talk about, but it's one of the things that I've experienced myself. Of course, which, you know, is something that um, we as especially melanated people have a lot of blockages in our solar plexus because that's the manifestation of, um, how we perceive ourselves, self-confidence, self-worth, and all of these things, especially as melanated people here in the Western Hemisphere, we have a really warped perception of who we are. So that that tends to really bog down the solar plexus, but the solar plexus is also, as well as the sacral chakra, are our, our gateways to abundance and opening ourselves up to understanding who we are. It's why you start the affirmations with I am. All of these different components are comprised within the energy of the solar plexus and the sacral chakra. So I really feel an immediate surge of energy, especially in those areas, 
which is also great for uh, the sisters out there because our sacral chakra is connected to our womb energy and our spiritual womb energy and the brothers because as quiet as it's kept, you guys have a spiritual womb center as well. So it helps to open up that energy, get things moving in that area, break up things like fibroid issues, like Mm -hmm. uh, different womb issues or ailments that we're dealing with. Because when I started doing yoga, I was a very, very sick uh, individual as far as on the concept of dis-ease or unwellness or, or imbalance. In that context, I had a lot of issues or a lot of problems. And the reason why I said sick is because, honestly, that's how I felt. <laughs> like, uh-huh. I was like, eh, blah, horrible. I dealt with a lot of issues. So when I started to interact with the yoga, because the herbs are amazing and they're wonderful, and, and the food is amazing and it's wonderful, and I transitioned to a vegan lifestyle um, at the age of 20, um, which was two years ago, so my actual anniversary would just came, just passed, so two years vegan now. Um, and I dealt with the vegan lifestyle, and that was wonderful, but nothing really activated it like the yoga. The yoga just tapped into the spirit, allowed my body to go deeper into meditation. My meditations became deeper. My spiritual connection um, with the, you know, with my ancestors, different things like that became much deeper, especially through the yogic practices. And, of course, it's something that you talk about, especially even on my show, and you talk about all the time, which is the whole concept of the breath. And it definitely addresses that. And the thing that I like about the comedic yoga um, aspect, the comedic yoga aspect, is that he emphasizes making sure that you're breathing correctly, even more so not that the positions aren't important, but even more so than the position itself. Because if your breath is not flowing correctly, regardless of how good you may make the position physically look, you're still not doing it right. (laughs) Right. Because yoga is more so a consciousness. It's more so about a state of awareness rather than it is a physical action in that concept. And that's why it's really important that my brothers understand something real quick. (laughs) Yoga is not just for women. (laughs) And it does not make you look gay, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Because that's, that's that's like, if that's a concern or that's an issue with people, I know especially brothers in our community, they're very macho-minded, that yoga does not do that. It's a yin form of of actual practice and um, exercise. So it is going to deal with your internal self. But what it's doing is it's doing very imperative things like massaging internal organs <laughs> and mm-hmm. making sure your spine is aligned and making sure your posture, because a lot of us have issues with our posture, especially just here in the Western Hemisphere, period. We got posture issues. <laughs> So it helps mm-hmm. to align that posture, make that back nice and straight. Um, I actually suffered from scoliosis from even a child, which is um, not scoliosis, excuse me, sway back, which was like, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a cute form of it. But um, it's like where you have your spine slightly swayed into one position, which can make it uncomfortable for stand, to stand for long periods of time and stuff like that. But um, definitely aligned itself. I haven't had an issue with any of those things, especially since I've started to do the yoga. So the amazing benefits of yoga go on and on forever. You get great circulation. You get the oxygenation of the blood. You get all types of different things, also t- um, tying into sacred geometry. You also have your body. You're putting your body into certain geometric shapes which is another thing that's really emphasized in the comedic yoga is about the angling, which is any yoga, of course, emphasizes angling, but especially in the comedic yoga, you get a lot of emphasis on right angles and 45-degree angles and making sure your body is going in these different directions, which is actually hitting certain points not only in your own personal meridian system but as well as in your overall auric field. That's going to allow you to expand your um, chakras, ex- I mean, clear your chakras, expand your aura, all types of different wonderful benefits as far as all of that. So the yoga is definitely popping. If you want to get down with some yoga, I really suggest looking comedic yoga up, especially um, getting down with um, 
I know you said that you have a system of yoga that you you're develop you've developed and talk about get with Brother yeah. Aleem and make sure you get that popping too, like all of it as much mm-hmm. as you can get. <laughs> Definitely all get right. on the yoga wave, cause ride that right. stuff out, cause it is really great for your body and your holistic self. No doubt, no doubt. Um, we're gonna go to the phone lines because we have a couple of calls. We have seven seven zero area code seven seven zero. You on the line? Greetings, brother Lamb, brother L, brother and the Queen. More. Uh, uh, brother Lamb, I uh, contacted you today on Facebook asking about uh, information on Thuja leaves and the connection or or help it might have with and. Uh, Right. The I Ching that you mentioned before. Right. Uh, does she know anything about right. human design? Because I, I, I sent her a link to the human design site, but it has a combination of I Ching and Kabbalah and uh, astrology, numerology, and whatnot, all combined in one science. Uh, the question I had about that is the fact that uh, of the aura types listed, I was one of the uh, of only 8% in the world mm-hmm. called a manifest. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what is the question? Um, okay. Did you have any in, any information about? Have you heard of that human design? Mm, no, I actually haven't. But it sounds really interesting. You sent me a link earlier <laughs> to look at this. Hold up. It's on your face. Definitely. What is? Okay. I've never actually heard of it, but it sounds like it's some good stuff because one of the biggest things that I like to emphasize is lining up a lot of these different systems. And this right. comes from, of course, um, dealing with a lot of Bobby Hemmings, because that's, that's where I started. <laughs> um, dealing with a lot of these different systems and aligning them, because they're actually dealing with the same archetypal energies on a, on a base level. They're dealing with the same archetypal structure. So when you start to align them, and start to compare them um, against each other and utilize them for customizational purposes, especially, like, uh, I'm assuming that it's doing that for you because it told you a specific outcome about your auric field. So any system that's doing that, that is a very powerful thing, Um, especially if if you're finding these things to be accurate. Again, like I said, anything with divination or anything with spirituality, make sure that it's coming from the heart chakra. If it resonated with your heart chakra when you read the information or when you evaluated the information about the outcome or the result of it, that's probably something that's resonating with you from a spiritual level, and that's probably something that was given to you as a spiritual message from your ancestors that you need to delve deeper into this information. Definitely send that to me. I don't. I haven't heard it's of it. It's already sent. It's in the Facebook message box. Um, okay. Dr. Aleem, as far as the Thuja leaves, do you have any information that might be beneficial? Right. Well, when I'll be speaking about two relief, we'd be talking about it in particular towards and for vaccinations. Um, a lot right. of the sisters um, get their babies, you know, um, vaccinated um, because they do not know um, that they have an option because they think it's mandatory. And, of course, they have the vaccination exemption form for cultural, religious, and political reasons. However, okay. when the child is vaccinated, um, Tutor leaf can be utilized in order to um, help eradicate the vaccine in the bloodstream. So when uh-huh. we speak about tutor leaf, that's when we're talking about eradicating toxins and poisons uh, from the body. Okay. Um, it's good for candidiasis, it's good for fungus, it's good for mold, it's good for um, bacteria, viruses, parasites, and worms. So tutor leaf is very um, good for that. Um, okay. If there's a problem getting tutor leaf, um, look at it in a homeopathic product. Um, most stores, even Vitamin Shop or GNC, might have it in a homeopathic uh, way, you know, um, in which that can be taken, you know, several times throughout the day. So check it out that way. All right. Appreciate that. I just Googled well, it. Your last show was it's awesome. P-A-T. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, what you were saying, Goddess? Oh, that's- 
I said I just Googled it, and it's spelled with a T H. So that's key. Right, T H. Yeah, I did a lot of research on it, brother L. Right, it's called the Tree of Life. All right. Yeah, I, I, I did a lot of research before I contacted you back. I sent you another message. Uh, as far as I'm a biochemist, uh, but as far as the molecular structure of it, it is really good for attaching to uh, heavy metals and, and dragging them out of your system. Uh, so and dragging them out of your system, exactly. Good for that, oh, but really? I was That's just really great. looking for something uh, in print, but I, I don't think you're going to be able to find anything like that nowadays. Well, I mean, it's out there. Keep looking. It has to be. Check a lot, right. like I said, with the homeopathic products. Check a lot with um, the herbalists. Um, companies like Spice Discounters, Star West. Right. Um, you know, yeah, look like at Star West. You know, might be able to help you, Mountain you know, with, um, finding the homeopathic version of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, good deal. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. All right. All right. No problem. All right, we got area code three four. Oh yeah, we got area code three four seven. <laughs> area code three four seven. You on the line? Area code three four seven. New York, New York. Three four seven. You on the line? <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know what happened, but hey. I guess he couldn't get through. Right. Um, Brother L, you have any questions? Because um, the sister, the guy that's oh, been yeah. dropping a whole lot of info, so I know you got some questions for Yes, she, Yes, she has. And uh, she has dropped some science that I have experienced. Uh, I have turned, uh, changed my life around, you know, in order to get my health together holistically. And uh, right. I have went to the doctors back to back. I've got another good good. Uh, Report on my health. You know, it's it, it's I turned my diabetes around, uh, my cholesterol uh, uh, cholesterol around, uh, 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 my kidneys, all that is turned around. You know, for the better. You know, and uh, he was astounded that I I didn't use any of the medications that he's prescribed for me <laughs> for a right. second time. He was he was astounded, so he took me off those medications. You know, and it's a such thing that uh, I, I was listening to you earlier. You said you weighed three hundred pounds. Well, I can, I can, I can relate to that. You know, because uh, all you have to do is change your lifestyle around those yeah. uh, destructive eating habits, negative eating habits, yeah. and turn those around. The key is mm-hmm. you cannot go back. Mm-hmm. To that, you cannot go yeah, back. Yeah, and, that. and that's why you have to start practically. I think the biggest problem with a lot of people is they're like, I right, yo, I'm giving up the fried chicken forever. I'm going vegan tomorrow. It's like it's not going to happen like that. <laughs> like, right, right. <laughs> like, you got to take it one step at a time. I always emphasize, like, starting where you are and and then dream as big as you want from that. If your goal is to be a breatharian, you still need to start at step one, which is making sure – that you're going to purify your body by removing the issues that you are intaking, which is the chemicals, the the white sugar, the processed stuff. And I know mm-hmm. it's like it sounds like we're on repeat with that information, but it's so key because you don't understand how destructive this stuff is in your body. It's literally eating up organs. Like, Slow down. Slow down. Causing destruction, like going in different areas and just really slowing down glandular functions, major mm-hmm. organ systems. You don't understand the level of, of what it's doing. And the brother mentioned earlier about heavy metal toxins. That's really key because that's what they're spraying in these chemtrails. Exactly. And a lot of people want to get fearful about that information, but really all you need is some good herbs because if if, if man can make it to destroy you, Mama Earth can heal you. Trust exactly. and believe that. Exactly. Trust it's, it's, and it's, believe no doubt. that. From Another Central thing Earth. I want to stress on, too, is that I've been doing a lot of the breathing techniques uh, that Dr. Eileen mm. has taught me, you know, and, and that's mm. a, a key. That's another very key yes. and important uh, thing we need to do as a remedy. To these yeah. uh, 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 chemtrails and uh, the mm-hmm. processed food that a lot of us that have <laughs> eaten before, and uh, mm-hmm. breathing the GMOs, into... all of that stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, just like uh, uh, when I go, uh, I don't eat too many grapes, but when I go eat grapes, I make sure they are seeded grapes. 
and not mm-hmm. seedless mm-hmm. grapes. And uh, a lot of people are going for these seedless watermelons. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm waiting for them to start on the seedless oranges next, I guess. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. You know, but uh I try to tell a lot of people, you know, uh, like Dr. Eileen said before, where they have no life to them. You know, they are yeah, hybrids. Yeah, exactly. They can't bear life. No, they exactly. can't bear life. Yeah, if it doesn't bear life or it doesn't bear fruit, then you well, why are you eating it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, that information is really, really key. But I think that's the thing that people don't really understand, how powerful holistic health can be or how powerful oh, yeah. herbs can be. Um, the thing about it is even I myself struggle with the uh, deprogramming of myself from that concept because you're programmed to think, ah, the medication works because it's these little white pills and they come in a fancy bottle and it costs a lot of money and you got to go to the special person and just write it down on a piece of paper and give it to you to take to the pharmacist who also wears a fancy white coat and knows a whole bunch of scientific words. Um, that you're kind of programmed to think that that medication is more powerful. And then, of course, when you experience it taking away symptoms for an extended period of time, which it will do at first when you first begin to interact with this medication, it will take away the symptoms at first. But what it's only doing is taking away the symptoms. So it's like if you have a gash or open wound on your body and all, all you take some painkillers and you never actually treat the wound. Exactly. So it's like you have all types of stuff um, becoming infected in that wound. You have all types of things. The flesh is starting to rot away, but you don't feel no pain, so who cares? Because apparently that's your only measure of how something is working. So that's a lot what that medication does. The reason why herbal um, remedies or um, holistic health is so powerful is because it's utilizing the life force of another thing, another being. Plants are beings. They have spirit. So Mm -hmm. you're utilizing the life force of the plant to actually stimulate the healing inside of yourself. So that's why this herb, these herbs, and don't take it lightly, people. When the brothers tell you stuff like, go get you some thuja leaf, okay? Go get you some thuja leaf because that stuff is only $15 on Amazon. Just looked it up. (laughs) (laughs) So we'll get you some of that if you're having a problem, especially ladies. The candiasis is real. Let me tell something to some people because I need to speak to the sisters real quick, especially brothers listening real close too because y'all have girlfriends, y'all have wives, y'all have daughters, y'all have mothers. Understand mm-hmm. the attack on the womb is very real. Very real. Um, Sister Queen of Four always talks about this very, very avidly, and I, I stick by her when she says this thing. The attack on the womb is real. They are putting stuff in the air. They are putting stuff in the food, in the water, any way they can, especially to kill us, but especially to cut off the life force from that womb because it is your manifestation center, ladies, and it's where you're bringing forth life. So if they can pollute the womb, they can pollute the minds of the future, the children that are going to be manifested through that womb, if you're lucky enough to be able to manifest children through that womb because they're making a lot of our sisters barren with this this uh, stuff that they're calling food, these chemicals and all these different things. The, mm-hmm. the realness is that you need to get with womb cleansing. Get you some yoni eggs, sisters. It's real. Get mm. you some yoni eggs. Start practicing with your yoni eggs. Start practicing certain levels of tantric understanding and magic. Realize the power that you have inside of your womb because that stuff is some real, real heavy energy. Start to deal with the cleansing foods that are going to clean out the issues that you're dealing with. Start to deal with um, herbs that help to balance yourself, like red clover, shepherd's purse. Um, the list goes on and on, red raspberry leaf. Start dealing with these herbs that are really going to help to start clean out the, cleaning out the womb as well as the blood because the blood is really, really imperative as well. That's what, you know, we have our cycles and things like that. Deal with herbs that are going to be restorative to the um different minerals that we have inside of our systems because we really start to lose a lot of iron around that time, on our moon time, especially if we're hemorrhaging a lot of blood. Um, make sure you start to deal with things like palziacro bark, which is another great herb 
that helps with the candidiasis because a lot of sisters deal with that problem. A lot of sisters, I've talked about it very openly myself. I've had that issue with the candidiasis, and it can become a very chronic thing. A lot of that is caused by the heavy metal toxic buildup from the chemtrails, from dental um, in, um, implants like the analogram fillings. I don't know if everybody's familiar with this, but the analog analogram fillings are actually made out of mercury. Mm. And if you're put, if they put mercury in your teeth, right? But they and lie and tell people eating, that it's silver filling. <laughs> uh huh. The silver filling are right. made out of mercury. Exactly. And so they call the nalogram fillings in the context of the um, dental world, but it's actually called um, the silver fillings, the silver top. It has very small amounts of silver in it, like about five percent silver, like and then like fifteen percent copper and other metals and like um, al copper alloy, I believe, or nickel alloy, and then like a huge amount of like mercury is in them. So. The, the actual substance of Nalogram was developed actually during the Industrial Revolution where they had to decide what they were going to do with all of these metals. And so they figured out, oh, we can put it in people's teeth because it's soft, it forms easy, it doesn't take a lot of skill to actually insert the dental fillings, which is why if you have state health insurance or Obamacare or whatever, you're probably going to get the silver fillings quicker than somebody who has a better par of insurance or who, um, you know, actually pays the dentist to do the work directly. The cheapest ones are the analogram fillings, and that's a problem that I dealt with personally, um, having the mercury poisoning build up in your system, because the thing about mercury is, or the thing about any neurotoxic heavy metal, is it does not clean out your, it clear out your system on its own. It's not like other toxins that will find a way to escape your body whether through exercise or whatever, it's something that you have to directly address. So you have to directly go into your body with the specific herbal formulas like the oregano, like the spirulina, like the chlorella. These different these herbs are really imperative in moving out the heavy metal toxin buildup. And that could be a problem of what um, actually blocking your immune system from rebuilding itself because the candiasis, or different other um, issues of the womb that a lot of sisters are dealing with is actually coming from an immune system deficiency that's caused by these heavy metal toxins, which are neurotoxins, which is going into your central nervous system and shutting down the functioning of certain glands, certain um, um, it's getting into your blood, shutting down the ability for your body to respond with, respond with the white blood cells, all these different things. So... It's really imperative that we start to clean out that stuff. So, like I said, start with that detoxification. Please start with that detoxification because that stuff is real, and that can actually, it's the root cause of a lot of different things. Like, I never really heard anybody talk about candida until I experienced it myself. And then I find out that it could be the root cause of a lot of different types of cancer. It's the root cause of a lot of different um, diabetes ailments and all these other different things. So I was like, hmm, and this is a very key element that they're not talking about. And just because you have a womb, uh, you don't, excuse me, just because you don't have a womb doesn't mean you can't be affected by it. I know a couple of brothers who have dealt with candidiasis as well. Mm. So that's something that we really need to address. It's a very, very vivid attack. And it comes from that Western eating style of a lot of bread, a lot of pasta, a lot of white um, wheat and flour and the, and the white rice and all of that stuff, especially my people who's like West African like me or uh, West Indian. You know, we love us some rice, <laughs> mm -hmm. some white rice and all of that stuff. And, you know, my Southern people do too. So the big thing about that is letting that go. Because you've got to really start to make those different changes. Let that stuff go because that's really a, a large part of why these issues are forming in our bodies. Mm -hmm. No doubt. We're going to go to the phone line here. We have area code 215. Area code 215, you're on the line. Um, hey, what's up? Peace. Hey, peace. Peace, peace. peace. My name is Wayne. Hey, Tay. <laughs> Hey, what 
is my cool queen <laughs> sister. <laughs> yeah, you know I was listening in. My sister dropped some gems. I ain't gonna miss that. <laughs> um, I actually have That's a couple of questions. Oh crap! I gotta remember them now. I'm over here taking notes and everything. Ugh, it's getting kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Well, my first question is. Oh wait. So as far as all the clips and stuff goes, and the, uh, all the different clues and the attack on the womb and everything. What mm-hmm. do you do? Because I'm myself, find myself in this position, and I can understand other people in this position. The information driving you crazy because when, you, when I, you know, try to introduce this mm-hmm. to people, they'd be like, their mm-hmm. their, their reaction is, "Well, damn, I can't eat shit then, huh?" I'm sorry, excuse my language, but damn, what am I going to eat then? Right. Like, I that, can't that's even. That's what they said. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, I'm dealing with my mom with this. I even act like that, too. And it's like, the yeah. information is out there, but some people either don't have access to it for whatever reason, and not to make excuses, mm-hmm. but it's like, what, is, what exactly would be the best starting mm. point? You know, the struggle is real. Some people, you know, can't afford certain things or... Yeah. You know, oh, girl, you know reason, I'm the queen of They don't have access. Don't play me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl. But yeah, no, I'm the queen of cheese. Yes. And then, and then also, okay, like, first the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, with the food and stuff, like with the um, <laughs> the the buzzwords are real too. Organic, natural, pure, uh-huh. all this stuff. Like I just read an article yeah. like yesterday about Trader Joe's fruit and coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, they be lying. <laughs> no. They be lying. <laughs> Listen, I'm they, like, a lot way, of places um, be lying and saying that their stuff is organic or pesticide free or blah blah blah, and they'll they'll lie on you real quick if if you're not savvy, or they'll say something's non-GMO and it's GMO. Like they'll lie on you real quick. Don't don't <laughs> don't just buy into that stuff. If you want to do if you want to do organic food, you better grow it yourself or know the person who's growing it. Or go to a trusted local sustainable farmer, please, because there's there's different, and you can look it up. I mean, there's hundreds of them, and then there a lot of Caucasian people go to these things, and then our people in the hood were kind of left out. Um, it's called farmers markets, where you can get a lot exactly. of good yeah. food for very reasonable prices because you're dealing directly with local sustainable farmers. But if you are in a place that does not have a uh, local farmer's market, which I'm telling you, go online, Google local farmer's market, type in the city you live in, put farmer's market, and it will show you the clearest, the closest one to you. And there's a whole website actually devoted to helping you find and locate these things. So please use the Internet for more than Facebook. People, <laughs> no shots, <laughs> just playing with y'all. But um, definitely, make sure you go to those different things. But for my people who don't have access to farmers market, now um, my king can attest to this <laughs> because he knows how I do. I be in the hood. I be mobbing in the hood. Don't don't play me. Like I be mobbing in the hood, and I will still find food to eat. The key thing is wash your vegetables. If you cannot find organic, if you cannot find um, these different buzzwords, non GMO, blah 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 blah. First thing, like you said, look for the seeded stuff. If it don't have mm-hmm. seeds in it, don't deal with it. Make exactly. sure whatever you're eating has the seeds. Um, right. Go to your green vegetables. Most of the green vegetables are pretty cool. Like if you go directly to your kale or your um, your different like um, your bok choy and all of that stuff, you know it can get pretty fancy with the wording. But don't get too just the dark, the big old dark leafy greens. Go over <laughs> there and get you some of them, <laughs> and start dealing with that. The um, the uh, mustard greens. You got all kinds of stuff. Deal with that as far as a foundation for your hardiness and things like that. But uh, start that with your stews and things like that because that will help you. Can even eat it raw, especially if you use um, mm-hmm. vinaigrette dressing with the raw apple cider vinegar. Make sure y'all get the raw apple cider vinegar. If you can't get raw, get apple cider vinegar. But try to get the raw apple cider vinegar organic because that will change and save your life. It also helps you with cleaning the vegetables, which is the next step of things I want to make sure we emphasize. Clean your vegetables in apple cider vinegar. Soak it. If you're going to have, like, a big tub, I'd say utilize maybe about an eighth of a cup of apple cider vinegar um, in, like, a, a about a, about a, 
the a sink size, sink full size of vegetables. Use about an eighth of a cup and wash your vegetables out. When you get them, wash them, chop uh-huh. them, clean them, and put them in Ziploc bags. Make sure there's no air, there's no moisture. Make sure they're cleaned off. I actually got that tip from me. Um, what was her name? A white girl who used to do the um. The, whatever, anyway <laughs> Anyway, I got it from a cooking channel And you actually clean your stuff off right there And then throw it in the freezer If you can't, if you're going to make If you're worried about it actually spoiling Even yeah, though the freezer I got, I got to warn you, the freezer will take away Some of the mineral content But if you're in the hood And you know, we starting out with Health 101 I'm trying to give you guys economic tips That will help you in the long run so again, like I said, just throw that in the freezer or throw that in the store box or like the um the crisper in the actual um refrigerator and that will help you out on the long term about keeping green, fresh vegetables in your house. Now the thing that you said about how do I start eating differently, like how do I not get overwhelmed with the information? The first thing is you never start by thinking about all the things you can't eat. If you go down that path, you will be depressed. You will miss pizza. You will miss chicken. You will miss everything that you have come to love in life. And you will start to get very depressed about things. The thing you need to focus on, and this is why I really want to emphasize to our people, this is something that's a lost art amongst our people, especially amongst our women. I'm very, very sad to say this is the cooking art. Um, sisters, it is not, there's nothing wrong with cooking. There are plenty of women who have become famous, okay, off of cooking and off of, and wealthy off of cooking. Plenty of men as well. My brothers don't feel left out. Come on in. Come into the kitchen. Learn how to cook. This is something you really need to know how to do. Learn to cook and prepare food. That is very key and imperative. But look at it this way. Look at it as you are, it's an, it's an art project, and now these new foods are the new uh, colors or different, different expansions of flavors and elements and, and different uh, degrees to which or tools to which you can now paint your new canvas with, which is going to be your new diet. So don't be afraid of the avocados. Even though I never liked avocados, I'll eat them if they're prepared, right? <laughs> like right. because they're really great for you. Don't be afraid of these different foods that have all these different names that you ain't never know. Do you, do, most people don't know what ginger looks like when it's not already processed. Um, the ginger looks kind of scary. Don't get mad at it. The turmeric looks kind of scary. Don't get mad at it. Get into it. Get the spices. That's another element. Get the spices. Get the herbs. Get your basil. Get your oregano. Get your rosemary. Get all of that stuff. And if you can't afford it, get the Italian mix because they got it all in there. <laughs> like, get you. Start where you are first. Get those herbs. Start to deal with um, better brands. Make sure you go through your seasoning cabinet. Make sure your seasonings don't have sugar, MSG or any other um, words that you can't pronounce, like that sex to hide us and something. If it says something you can't pronounce, don't throw it out because it's not safe. Don't eat that. <laughs> if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it pretty much, unless it's called by its Latin name in which you might not be able to pronounce it, but you might want to look it up. Anyway, so go through your seasoning cabinet. Make sure you throw out all the MSG crap, all the sugar crap, all the processed salt crap, because that's another thing. We want to start moving away from the iodine salt, and we want to start moving towards the sea salt. If all you can find is white sea salt for the time being, that's okay, but eventually we want to move into the pink Himalayan salts and the Celtic salts, which have color to them and are more healthy for you. And eventually you want to move away from utilizing too much salt Anyway, as your taste buds grow and change into this new eating lifestyle, you mm-hmm. won't be so worried about over-salting everything anyway because you're going to play with all these herbs and spices, the turmeric, the chili powder, the um, the different coriander, the, uh, the cayenne pepper, I mean the curry. I could go on for days. You mm-hmm. know, I love some food. So <laughs> you want to start being, bringing that into your diet. Put it in on some mustard greens. See how it goes. Make you some coconut creamy kale. Hashtag go look at at the Instinct Media because I got the recipe up there. Like, go make you some of these great things with these great ingredients that you can find locally 
and learn how to be able to become a creative person. Art, the art of cooking is an art, okay? Cooking is definitely a way to express yourself. Preparing food is a way to express yourself. Look at it as an adventure. Look at it as an opportunity. Look at it as something new and exciting. Don't look at it as I can't, I can't, I can't. Look at it as I can, I can, I can. And that's going to be able to change your whole perspective on how you eat. All right. Did did she answer your question, God? (laughs) Yes, indeed she did. But I have another question real quick. When she was talking about the seeds and stuff, making sure things are seeded, I wanted to know, Mm -hmm. because I started to save the seeds, like it's the end of the world type stuff, but I'm wondering, is there anything more (laughs) seeds that I'm saving? (laughs) Like, if I actually, you know, eventually do want to start growing my own things, I'm like, should I be saving these Uh seeds or (laughs) no? Okay, the problem with that could come from, see, now, they some sneaky bastards with it. They really are. Uh, (laughs) Some of the mass-produced produce is actually radiated so that it Mm. doesn't bear fruit, even though it will have seeds. Mm. So sometimes some of the seeds that you will get, you can't really tell unless you know who you're buying from, if it's local, grown, you know, um, uh, heirloom seeds or whatever the case may be. Um, you don't mm-hmm. know unless you know who you're buying from, which is why I said the farmer's markets are really cool and you guys want to go and check them out. So the seeds, oh, if the, it's from a produce local... junction. Huh? Um, and, and, oh, um, I, produce junction? Place, produce I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, 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 over there by Germantown, right? Um, yeah, Bryn Mawr, Bryn Mawr, off of uh, City mm-hmm, Line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I agree, you know, get my Philly stuff <laughs> on now. <play>. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no. But um no, they're I, I think they're cool. I don't know. I believe I do believe they're they're from local farmers over there because that place is actually bomb. If you're in Philly, go yeah. check out the Produce Junction. They have great deals on good 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 stuff. So make sure um, you have a go car. out there. <laughs> or a yeah. cart, one of the other. I'll be busting <laughs> it. What? Okay. Yeah, anyway, the bus, sorry. Back real to real the point. Bus, yeah. <laughs> the, the seeds will get radiated. The seeds will get radiated. From like major like major markets, like if you went to like let's I don't know what you guys' markets are down there, or Kroger's or if you guys have I don't know there's different places internationally. Trader Joe's, Whole Foods places. and stuff Trader, like that. Um, well, Trader Joe's. I'm trying to run away from I them. don't exactly specifically know. I wouldn't say run away. I'm just saying <laughs> I wouldn't specifically know their protocol. I mean, you could do more research into it, but your conventional supermarkets more than likely are radiating their produce. So. <laughs> That's actually an issue. You probably don't want to save those seeds. Oh, wow. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to add? Sorry, I, I kind of took Here's that over. I, I really thought I was doing something, too, but I'm glad to know now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I got my seeds, but those things radiated. Oh, no, trash. I'm done. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's pretty yeah. much what it is. That's the only thing about that. But, um, mm-hmm. Aline Bay, you have anything to add on that? Because on that? I know, like, he has a lot of information. He's been doing it for a minute. <laughs> Nope. Okay. Ollie? Cool. So any other questions, sister? Um, all right, let's just be real. What does one do when they run out of food and there's, like, nothing but stuff they have absolutely no business eating and, you know. Okay, the hood hookup, right? Yeah. Talking about the hood hookup. Okay, I got you. Okay. Yeah, like, <laughs> like when you, it's an emergency, you just look around the refrigerator and you mm-hmm. keep looking. No, there ain't nothing in there every time you look, but you're just going to keep looking anyway because. I'm not going to be a pair. Okay. Like, what do you do? <laughs> I completely know. Because, I mean, again, like the, like the brother said earlier, I'm only 22 years old. I'm starting my own businesses. I mean, I don't have a lot of extra income. So I, I definitely can feel everybody about the struggle and oh. its realness and, and you feeling it. Um, <laughs> but death to the struggle and rise to the ascension, right? Okay, so anyway, basically... <laughs> right. Uh, if it's if the struggle is becoming real to you and you cannot find a whole bunch of food in your uh, particular food storage area, um, <laughs> the biggest things I want to emphasize is budgeting with our people. Um, please invest in yourself with food. Please make sure that you have a budget allotted for your food intake and don't rely on anybody else to feed you, especially those outside of your community. That is the public service announcement. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, and then now, if okay, we're in the struggle area where the struggle is really real, all right, boom. Let's get you 
some brown rice because that's pretty easy to find most places. You could probably go to the hood spot. They hook you up. Maybe they might rip you off a little bit, $3, $4 for some rice. Um, but um, if you get it on a good day, $2 maybe for a package of brown rice. That will last you a couple days, okay? Get you some brown rice. Make sure you keep it. If you can buy in bulk and get some wild rice, that would be even better. Again, like I said, that's the best thing that we want to aim for. But if the struggle is real, get you some brown rice. Um, vegetables at all is better than no vegetables. So either make sure... Um, you go to the produce, I mean, like, one head of kale sometimes can be, like, two two bucks and if it's a really expensive place, but sometimes you might be able to get a good deal, maybe a dollar and some change. Or go get you um, a fresh thing of cabbage, because cabbage is cheap, and that's what I learned. <laughs> go get you a head of cabbage and make sure you holler at that. Or if the struggle is really real, the struggle has oh. become an issue, <laughs> right? Like Go that. to the frozen food section. Try to, don't do this a whole bunch. Don't make this your regular thing. But if the struggle has become an issue, it has become a major boulder in your life, okay? Go to the frozen vegetable section and get you some frozen broccoli, uh, frozen string beans or frozen something, okay? But it, uh, make sure that it is a actual vegetable. It is green, okay? Not corn. Corn doesn't count. I'm sorry, you guys. Corn does not count as a vegetable. Um, it's a starch. Uh, so get you a green frozen vegetable mix or, or whatever you, you can find. And holla at that with some spring onions or some white onions, whatever you have available, Stir fry yourself something good with some good veggie uh, vegetable uh, mix. You can get you some veggie broth. You can get you some um, some like I said, holla at that Italian mix, the Mrs. Dash. Throw that all together and have you a good time and have you some steamed vegetables and broccoli. Or you can make a stew if the struggle is really real again. Try to get dried beans. Dried beans in bulk are really cheaper. Make you guys, make yourself a healthy vegetable, hearty vegetable stew, and, and try and keep it going that way. So, like, if the struggle has become absolutely real, you have no excuse. You can still have the option between buying the hamburger and buying some brown rice and some veggies. Like, you still have right. that option. So make sure that you kind of do those things. And, again, like the dried beans in bulk, great, because it lasts you a long time. And then... The dried foods you can also order off the Internet. People realize the complexity of this gift that has been given to you called Amazon because <laughs> you can go in there and find you some bulk, pound, a pound of, uh, I was looking it up the other day, a pound of quinoa for $16. <laughs> My whole life just changed. Like a pound of wild rice for like 20 bucks. Like, you can really do a lot with a pound of these different things and stock up and get you some bulk going. Make sure you kind of buy in bulk in that way. So those are the different things you can do to make um, the healthy eating cost effective. All right. Thank you, Goddess. And we're going to go to the phone lines. We're going to go to area code 972, area code 972. You're on the line. Amen. Hello? Peace. Yes, greetings. Hey, how y'all doing, brother and sister? Great. Doing well, doing well. Very well, brother. I, I got a question for the sister. So, oh, yeah, she ready for you. I need I need to know, because I can't really get a good answer from nobody. If you're trying to mm-hmm. work out, like body weight, all weight weights, what's the best thing to do if you don't want to get that protein from the meat just to rejuvenate yourself? Ah, I'm, I'm glad you asked this question, because this was in my herbalist class couple weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> so I'm ready. Um, get you some spirulina. Spirulina? Oh, spirulina and some chlorella. Oh, chlorella. Really, really, really great sources of um, protein and all types of minerals and vitamins. Um, yeah, also, moringa is really great. Right. Yeah, eight to ten times um, the protein of a, um, of a um, porterhouse steak. There you go now. Holla at you some lentils. <laughs> Get real acquainted with the legume family. For those who aren't, who don't know what legume means, that's nuts and beans. <laughs> and 
holla at them. Black beans. Uh, black beans are particularly better than some of the other beans, some chickpeas and lentils. Those are the beans that I normally stick to, even though sometimes I will get, you know, a little, like, cheaty and do some pink beans. But those other beans are kind of hybrid versions. But um, the lentils are really good. The black beans are cool because definitely they have that high antioxidant power, and it also helps with actually trimming the waistline. Black beans are really, really great for keeping stomach fat away. So that's really cool. And the lentils are actually alkaline. So um, even though it's debatable, they might c- could be hybrid or whatever, but don't get caught up with these extra words. Just know that they're good for you and they have a lot of protein in them. So make sure you get real acquainted with the, um, the almond family. Holla at them. Holla at cashews. Holla at some, um, not so much peanuts because peanuts aren't that great for your body. Um, but you you could go pretty much into the, the Bloom family and find you a pretty sustainable amount. Also, broccoli has a good amount of protein in it. Um, kale has a good amount of protein in it. So you can get your protein from plant sources. It's not an issue or a problem, but definitely make sure you're supplementing because a lot of these foods that are conventionally grown are, deplete, are grown in uh, nutrient-depleted soil. So you want to make sure you're going forward and uh, purchasing that spirulina and that chlorella, too, because they work really amazing together. My sister Sharice has blessed me with the wonderful recipe of Gorilla Juice, which I will tell you guys about. Remind me. I will tell you guys about <laughs> in a couple seconds. But the spirulina, amazing for that for, in particular. And you can buy that again on Amazon Twenty dollars for a pound. I want to holla at some of my people though, and start making sure that I can start getting some wholesale sources. So if anybody is a herbalist and they have access to these wholesale uh, herbs uh, for good prices, please get in contact with me. <laughs> I'll give out my contact information at the end of the show. One, but please get one, in contact one, with me. One number one. Hmm? That's our website: www.drlemelbay.com. Um, I'll check you out. <laughs> Right, I'm a master herbalist also, so you can definitely check me okay. out. I've been doing and studying herbology for over 35 years. So check us out. All right, now. What was, that <laughs> what was that plant that started with the M you told me earlier? The mullein? Yeah, the mullein. Yes. Mullein is re- it's a democratin. Uh, I, guess, I, don't know, I think I said that right. The mullein. <laughs> anyway, whatever. It basically, what it does is it takes off, like, plaque buildup or phlegm buildup. Like, it helps to get rid of that. So the mullein is really, really, it has a lot of different other properties as well. It's really high in even vitamin C as well. Um, mullein is just a great herb all around. Um, what did you want to know about the mullein? Oh, it's no, you name? had told me, um... Because when you was naming spirulina and Corella, you had said another uh-huh. one that was um, oh. good. Oh, oh, not mullein. Oh, oh, okay. No, moringa. Not, moringa. 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 Yes. The moringa will bless you. <laughs> it will bless you. It has high amounts of uh, nutrients to it. And the thing is, please, people, don't get caught up in these scientific Western ideals of uh, nutrition because they have you thinking that you need protein and you need this and you need that. You need nutrients, people. Not that you don't. I'm not. Don't twist me up and say that Tay said you don't need protein because that's not what I said. What I said is that you need nutrients. You need actual uh, nutrients that's going to feed your body. You need the elements that are going to break down. That break down in your body. And are actually going to feed you on a cellular level. You need that in your diet. And and again, like I said, the superfoods of moringa, spirulina, and chlorella are really great for doing a lot of that. All right, I I wanted to um ask your opinion about pistachios too because I noticed like before I used to eat pistachios, it didn't bother me, but I noticed lately when I eat them, mm. it's like I wake up the next day and I feel like um, mucus coming. Okay. Well, that could also be due to environmental reasons as well. Um, I get the dry roasted with no salt, and it's like uh, I notice now I have, like, a different effect when I eat pistachios, so I really don't fool yeah, with Yeah, 
the, the thing about tree nuts is it can cause a lot of allergic reactions. Now, if you started to change your diet in other ways, like let's say you started to eat more green vegetables or you started to uh, implement healthier ways of living, whether it be even just through exercise alone and getting more oxygen in your system, what you could have started to do is start a metabolic process that's going to actually cause reactions from different foods that you might not have had reactions to in the past, especially coupled with the uh, the chemtrails and all of the different things that are going on environmentally. So it could be a level of that you need to purify your body or that your body just has the extra sensitivity and you might not really need to deal with those for a while. So for the time being, what I'd say for you is to kind of, like, stay away from them. Go more towards almonds. Almonds are kind of a safe nut, (laughs) safer nut. They're alkaline, and they have a lot of great properties. If you can get them raw, um, raw nuts are always kind of better. Sunflower seeds as well, too. Seeds tend to cause less of an allergic reaction in people because the tree nuts actually tend to have a... um, higher reactions because you have different molds and funguses that can kind of be in there and stuff and different things. It's just not good. So um, make sure that you deal with the seeds. If you're going to start dealing uh, uh, start dealing with sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, start dealing with those types of things as an alternative to kind of dealing with um, the tree nuts because you can kind of have those issues. And also make sure you're detoxing. If you guys are not detoxing, I cannot guarantee that the information that I'm giving you will help you in any way, shape, or form because your body will be laden with toxins and not have the proper reactions that it needs to have to the nutrition that you're getting from food. All right. Um, you started talking about detox, and I forgot what I was going to ask you now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, can, you, can you throw me a quick little detox out? Um, a quick detox. Well, basically, this is actually something that I do with my sister Sharice from Awaken Vitality, big up to awakenvitality.com. Um, we um also do uh, this thing called awakening cleanses. So if anybody needs um aid assistance on cleansing workshops or anything like that, you can definitely check us out at Awakening Cleanse on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash awakening cleanse. But I can definitely give you a couple tips right now. One of the biggest things, like I said, Make sure all them processed foods is gone. Now you've moved out the processed foods, which I've already given the list multiple times. No need to repeat that. Um, But now, okay, start to deal with the dark leafy greens. Dark leafy greens are really great because they have this thing called chlorophyll, and chlorophyll naturally is a lichen. The cellular structure of chlorophyll and the actual molecular structure of chlorophyll mimics that of human blood. And it's actually really, really great, a really great purifier for the human blood. It's pretty much like plant blood, kind of, <laughs> in a way. So it really helps to revitalize your whole, um, your whole system, especially with the blood purification, which is a really big issue because the blood is bringing the, remember, the purpose of the blood and the circulatory system is to bring the nutrients and the oxygen to the tissues and the cells and the organs. So if your body's not doing that correctly, we got a really fundamental break, breakdown in the process. Um, a really quick, simple thing you could do every day is get you some green juice, okay? Start, um, start out juicing green vegetables. A, a great, great recipe for green juice um, or a, green, a version of green juice is Gorilla Juice, which I said I will give out the recipe for, so I'll do it right now. Um, gorilla Juice is basically 32 ounces of water. It's um, one tablespoon of spirulina and one tablespoon of chlorella and one lemon or lime juice and one lemon or lime squeezed, okay? And you put that all together, shake it all up real good because it's going to get real concentrated at the bottom, so you want to shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, okay? And then you drink that every day. Drink at least 32 ounces per day. It will bless you. Like, the amount of beta carotene that's in there started making my eyes, like, get clearer. I was like, oh, snap, I got energy, mental clarity, balance, helps with all the B vitamins, helps with your, um, helps to um, lighten up your mood. You got a lot of nutrients. You got the protein. You got all types of stuff that's really great for you in that recipe alone. The reason why I say lemon or lime, some people like lime, some people like lemons, 
and it's actually easier to find seeded lemons. So if you're cool with lemons, do the lemon thing. But according to the whole concept of electric foods, limes are actually better for you. And I'm a lime girl. I actually like limes better than lemons anyway. So I'll use the limes. But you can use the lemons or the limes, whatever works for you. And if it's really hard for you to get down at first, kind of don't be freaked out because if you're coming straight from the processed food chain, don't. Don't be freaked out if it kind of makes you a little bit unsettled at first because the taste can be kind of abrasive to somebody who's not used to earthy taste. So add a little bit of raw honey or stevia into it, which is a natural sweetener that won't raise your glycemic index or spike your blood sugar, as we would like to call it normally. (laughs) So it actually helps you out on that level. And a little bit of sweetener will kind of make it mellower to go down. So that's something basic that you could do. If you don't have access to spirulina and um, chlorella right away, uh, one simple, really quick, easy thing that you could do, a lime and some cayenne pepper in some water in the, every morning when you wake up will help that um, cleansing process to get jump-started. So that kind of will help with alkalizing. Cayenne pepper is great for cleaning out the blood, getting your circulation flowing, um, repelling Uh, parasites and uh, all that type of stuff. And it's a great fat burner as well. How much cayenne pepper? Um, I would say do it to your taste buds. But at the very least, a half a teaspoon. But um, I'm I'm a little heavy-handed, so (laughs) you you want to put enough that you're seeing some of it into the actual uh, mixture that is turning a little bit red, but you don't want to go so hot you're going to blow through steam through the roof. So kind of adjust it from you. Start at a half a teaspoon and see how you how you do. If you can take a little bit more, put more. If you need to cut it down a little bit less and work your way back up, then do that. Yeah, I remember my question also. Uh, what I was going to ask was, is it true? I heard that you're supposed to soak almonds before you eat them sometimes or something like that. Is that true? Yeah. That can actually help with the digestive process just because it kind of breaks down the um, skin and stuff like that, too. Um, It also helps, especially if you're going to eat them raw, kind of makes them more digestible. You can do that if that's something that you're into. But if that, you know, soaking almonds is something you're just not about um, right now. then um, it's not going to kill you, but almonds really are great for you. So eating them, even if they're not soaked, is going to help you out, especially if you're coming from, again, like I said, unhealthy 101 processed foods, fried chicken, all that stuff. If you're coming from that background, um, you can just eat the almonds, uh, especially make sure they're raw more than anything. That would be my first concern, making sure they're raw. And then you can get into the, oh, I want to soak it and make an almond patty out of live food and stuff. And that's really great to get into as well. But let's just start at the basic level, make sure they're raw and unpasteurized because they'll try to get you with that too. They'll be like, oh, it's raw, and you'll bite it, and it's crunchy, and you're like, why is it crunchy? Because it's pasteurized. The, um, the real raw almonds are soft, gummy. Yeah, I've been um I've been back and forth with the with the vegan vegetarianism and all that. It's just like the um, sister called in earlier. It's just been like life struggles. So I've been having to go back and forth. Like I do it for a while, then I have to go back to eating certain stuff I don't want to eat because I don't have no choice. So I just be going back and forth with it. So I can do it. Like it's I could in my mind mentally I can do it. It's just life situations just kind of throw me a curveball. You hear me? Mm-hmm. I understand. Keep trying, keep going, stay encouraged, be positive about it. The more that you are vibrating on this level, the more things you'll attract to you. I swear to God, as soon as I went vegan, all these health places started opening up in the town that I live in, and this place is not a really healthy place to live. I live in a a town called Brockton in Massachusetts. Nobody knows where it is. Don't ask. I'm not playing with you. But basically what happened is I started to get into the health information. I literally started to attract more health stores started to open up in my area. Uh, Different supermarkets opened up that carried more healthier uh, alternatives 
different things will open up as long as you stay positive. Again, I want to remind everybody it's a consciousness. It's a frequency. It's something you're tapping into from a holistic level. So make sure you stay encouraged, stay positive, talk to other people who are going through it, get in contact with different um, health coaches, talk to, uh, come on, tune in to Dr. Eileen Bay every Wednesday, right? <laughs> Make exactly. sure you're getting enough information. Um, if you're going to go to the, the online websites, make sure that they're actually from accredited sources. Deal with them, too. It's really great. There's so much information out there. Go to your farmer's markets. Do whatever you can. Connect with other conscious people who are on that same path as you. But stay encouraged, stay on, and nobody gets it the first time. Nobody gets it the first time. You're going to go back and forth for a little while unless you're just like one of those gung-ho people who's like, you know what, hurrah, and goes for it. But not everybody's that way, so don't feel bad about that. Stay encouraged, okay? All right, we got 10 minutes um, left, so we're going to continue going to the phone line. And um, everybody who comes on, um, we got, matter of fact, um, let me get this in. Peace, got it. Peace, God. Now, Wednesday, Rose. Oh, peace, Goddess. <laughs> peace. First, first off, I want to say um, thank you so much, Brother Rose, for now for holding oh. it up seven days ago. Oh, <laughs> really all right. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. And then also, too, for the brother that's adding on, we just want to encourage the callers because we really appreciate y'all. We feel like what good is it if you know, y'all not interested? I'm just so grateful to hear the interest. Sound like it was a Texas vibration or a Louisiana down south vibe. I just want to give a shout out to my family in Texas and then also in Louisiana. Um, my heart is kind of heavy because we are out of town. A lot of you have purchased from the website, and we just really, 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 really appreciate you. Um, I just want to give a special shout out to Sister Cassandra. I know it's been three weeks, but it we the funeral is. Friday. My step grandmother, she crossed over ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. And and while we building on numbers for the those who play the number, um, four oh nine hit in New York and four nineteen. That's the four nineteen hit actually twice. That's that's the God's um born day, just a whole bunch of energy surrounded by that. The vortex open on that day, you know, some of y'all have that vibe too. Six one four whatever. But um it is a wonderful vibe. I want to keep also with the announcements. Um, Hi, Queen. Thank you so much, Goddess. Your display of wisdom is beautiful, um, bubbly, light, um, respectable, informative. I just was so mentally stimulated, and it was just beautiful, you know? I love the way you put it all together. <laughs> I feel like there's nothing new under the sun, you know? And thank you so much because it was just beautiful. Um, but September, in September, we will be having another healing retreat space. Um, due to circumstances, we will be domiciling in the New York State Republic, the Empire. The ancestors got a plan for this, so we will be having um, Qigong in the park. So if you're interested, please call us. We will always keep our numbers. The number is 910-364-9099. Yep, so let us know if you're interested in Qigong in the Park. Um, we'll be in the Regal Park, Queens area, as well as the uh, Marcus Darby Park. So, But we have um, we have a land transport, so we'll travel. But I just I just want to just give the announcements and just peace and love. Peace. Peace and love. <laughs> peace and love. So, Ty Queen, please, again, give your website and your telephone number so the family can contact you. Definitely, definitely. Well, um, everybody can hit me up at GeminiCreatress.com. That's G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E, Creatress, C-R-E-A-T-R-E-E-S, I mean, excuse me, E-S-S, dot com. And you can go on there and holler at me. Um, I'm Tay Queen on Facebook or at the NSIC Tay Queen. Got two pages. Don't tell Facebook. Um <laughs> You hit me up, facebook.com slash Gemini Creatress, facebook.com slash conversations with the queen, or facebook.com slash Gemini Creations, which is actually my business. I also like to announce everybody, we have a sale going on on Gemstones. 
Um, and all gemstone products, um, I make gemstone jewelry, handmade jewelry. Um, I also sell the gemstones individually, and I do consultations with people spiritually and all that great stuff. All of it's on discount until the 26th, so that's Saturday. So you can definitely check us out there, and that's um, facebook.com slash Gemini Creations, or you can go to GeminiCreations.wordpress.com, and that's Gemini spelled G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E. So make sure you spell it that way or you won't get me. Um, So that's um, all the information. Again, like I said, if you need assistance in health consultations or you need assistance with um, detoxification and all these different things, please hit me up. You can email me, taequeen, T-A-E-Q-U-E-E-N, at hotmail.com. Definitely get in contact with me there. Um, Spiritual consultations. Um, especially dealing with the gemstone healing. If you really want to get into that, definitely hit me up there, and uh, we can deal with it from there. All right. No doubt, no doubt. And also, um, have price. We have my book on sale, First World Order. First World Order. I'm getting ready to say First World Order Radio, but First World Order. Um, my book is on sale, um, have price. So um, hit us up on that. Like my wife said, 910-364-9099. Or go to our website, www.dralimelbay.com. That's Z R A L I M E L B E Y dot com. All right. Um, any closing remarks, anyone, before we go? Well, yeah, um, to do some full disclosure, we're doing that because the YouTube family um, got the down the upload late. So we're still learning how to upload to YouTube. So we got Cypress helping us, and they be busy. So they do upload as soon as they can. I just want to thank them so much. But we're extending the sale between the 23rd and the 28th. All right? 23rd through the 28th. And it will be on the website. Peace and love. 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 Yes, and I will try to get to see your lecture, the Queen. Yes. Uh, this is Brother Fahim Rudinell talking. Uh, I will get to see your lectures. Uh, uh, is that the, uh, this Saturday or Saturday after next? Um, that's next Saturday, um, August 2nd again. At, All right. Um, so you can come out and check me out. Um, you can go we, on we'll com slash conversations with the Queen, and the um, information is all up there as well. All right. Don't forget, area code 618, the last call for the night. Area code 618, you're on the line. Hey, peace and blessings, family. Um, my name is Metu Hotep. I am the brother who is bringing in the queen. Uh, I like, I like to, yeah, I, I like to say uh, I appreciate you for uh, having the show, uh, Sister Queen. You you done a phenomenal job. You know, to be as uh, as young as you are. You know, I I'm, I've always been bringing in different speakers, but uh, just like all my other speakers say, if it had not been for, for promoters. A lot of us would never have seen people like Sister Queen Tay, and uh, it's a pleasure to be able to bring the sister. As she said before, as Eric Morales said before, if you want to get your tickets, you can also get in contact with me directly, and uh, you can get your tickets from me. Uh, hopefully we have a nice big crowd to support the sister. I would love to be able to bring her back, and we can start to uh, cultivate the minds and hearts of our people as we liberate them. No doubt, no doubt. No doubt, yes. All right, well, everybody in the St. Louis area, you heard Brother Mintu, as well as exactly. also Sky Queen, and um, Brother Fahim, who's in the area, um, definitely go and check them out. Um, name the place one more time for the audience. Was it Better Family Life? Is, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Oh, that's the Better Family Life Cultural Educational and Business Center. Um, you can find out the um, details, like I said, by calling the brother or facebook.com slash conversations with the queen, and you'll be able to go on there and make sure that you get all the information that you need. All right. All right. And, um, you know, there is so many wonderful things going on. And, um, God, is it December the 7th or December the 12th? Um, it's a King Simon production up here at the National Black Theater. December the 7th. 
Word. So we want to give you ample time in your schedule right. to make it manifest. Right. Well, it's going to be the Melanin Conference. It's going to be myself. Um, I believe Layla Africa, Dr. Layla Africa, as well as also Dr. Ann Brown and several others. And it's going to be a symposium on the science of melanin. So check us out on the 7th here in New York at the National Black Theater, the King Summit Production. All right. For those who have any questions, give us a call at 910-364-9099. And we out. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace.